No, thanks, uh, uh, Premier, uh, and thanks, uh, Speaker. We have come to the end of the State of the Province Address, and um, um, as we have promised uh, our colleagues in the media that we will give them an opportunity to interact with you, uh, some of them have already taken the advantage of being next to the Premier, but others are still uh, waiting to to uh, ask one or two questions. Um, in, in our midst, uh, Speaker and uh, Premier, uh, we have the DG, um, the Deputy Secretary of the Legislature is, uh, is out, but uh, we will continue nonetheless. Um, at this point in time, uh, Speaker, I have noted a few questions which were already prepared, but before uh, we allow those questions to the Premier, um, I would like to give the Speaker a few minutes uh, to give her reflection in terms of the manner in which the official opening in the state of the province has unfolded uh, in line with the COVID regulations. Uh, speaker? Yes. Um, good morning, once more. Uh, in fact, it's a it's, it's good day. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mkoni. I think uh, we are grateful that um, we, we managed to hold SOPA, which also marks the opening of Parliament. It was not an easy process because you would remember that usually we are supposed to have public in numbers. We are supposed to uh, open, we are usually having uh, large numbers. Uh, uh, of people who will be witnessing uh, this day. But unfortunately, due to COVID-19 regulations, we could not open up as much as we would have loved to. We are hoping that uh, the public, the people of the free state, did manage to follow us on social media and on the television channels that were broadcasting the, the SOPA today. Uh, we had to stick to COVID-19 uh, uh, protocols. You remember that uh, it was only um, the day before yesterday uh, in the evening when the president announced the relaxation of regulations. Already by that time, our preparations were far advanced. We had to take a little number, a limited number of the members of the legislature, including the executive, and also the guests that, that we had. We could only manage to take 24 of them. It was not an easy task, but we are grateful that we managed to get through it, and we, we are confident that the message that was delivered by our Premier has reached the, the, the members of the public. I also want to take this uh, moment to thank our media uh, that is here today. We you were here last week, Thursday, to uh, 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 publicize the, the SOPA, make people aware that we are going to be having the SOPA this day. And even today you are here making sure that our people uh, uh, are kept informed of what is happening in the legislature. We are grateful for that. And uh, moving forward, our committees have been working very hard. It was not an easy year. 2020, 2021 was not an easy year, but we are mindful, um, and we are happy and, and uh, 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 confident uh, that uh, 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 despite the circumstances, they will be able to discharge their duties following the state of the province address and everything else that the executive is going to do based on the very same state of the province address 
that has been delivered by the, by the Premier. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Indeed, uh, the stage has been set. Uh, the Premier uh, and the Speaker, I think colleagues are free now to ask questions. But first and foremost, I have questions from Martin, uh, from the weekly newspaper. Uh, is the weekly? How's that? Free State. Free State Sun. Sorry? The Free Stater. Okay. Please use the microphone on your, on your left there. Colleagues can use the other microphone on the right there. Sidiso uh, Mashwani, you can also approach the, the microphone there because you, you are next. Uh, just press there. It will uh, thank you very much. Thank you. The name is uh, Martin, uh, the Free Stater. Um, my first question uh, to the Premier will be the issue of um, on the issue of GBV. You mentioned that you have got uh, some uh, district uh, personnel that you have appointed to assist those that have been um, affected. I just wanted to find out uh, whether there are any plans by the provincial government to assist the perpetrators themselves uh, after probably they have gone to, they have served their sentences or probably maybe they don't really get to go to prison, but I just want to know if there are any programs to assist the perpetrators uh, themselves. And then uh, on the issue of uh, roads, you said um, some of the things that could have been done, you know, there were problems with um, the hard lockdown. Um, there's no guarantee, again, this, this financial year that we may not have another lockdown given that uh, there's, there's a possibility of, um, of a third, um, of a third, um, I mean, of a third, what do you call it? third wave, so thank you very much, of a third wave. I just want to know if you have got any contingency uh, measures to really ensure that uh, these roads will be completed um, on time. Uh, I've got a question for the speaker. Uh, it was raised at the media briefing uh, last week, the issue of uh, the budget cut as a result of uh, as a result of uh, the scaling down of, uh, what's, uh, of, of the whole event. I just want to find out if you've got a figure now, or if you don't have a figure, maybe just a percentage to say, you know, you've cut by such and such a percentage, because I know a figure might be a bit difficult. Thank you very much. See this all? Colleagues, you don't have to use the same mic. You can use the other, the other one. Yeah. Uh, Premier, uh, as the provincial government, um, how are you going to make sure that uh, go government officials implement the issues you mentioned today? The second question is, uh, last year there have been poor service delivery protests in municipalities that are led by women in the, in, the, in the province. Some of the people who were leading those protests are men who are members of the ruling party. Uh, so my question is, is there a conspiracy to destabilize municipalities that are led by women? and? to remove them from their uh, positions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Becca, 
from Moteo and uh, Pongani from the Guard, is also representing Free State Sun. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, thank you, Premier, for your wonderful speech today. I have uh, just a brief question. And Premier, you spoke about the project, uh, the project that are going to create thousands of jobs in the province. And I never heard talking about uh, Ramkral. And is Ramkral going to be one of those projects or is it going to be a project on its own? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable uh, Premier. I have only two questions that uh, have been going, going straight to you. I, I heard uh, Madam Premier talking about uh, or the increasing of the informal settlement in the province. Uh, in, in, his, in her speech. I just want to know how is he going to decrease the number because the number of the informal settlements are starting to increase from 143 to 173, of which I think it's a, it's a, it's a worrying concern to the citizens uh, of this province. And the second question is the issue of uh, the licensing uh, centers in the province. We have seen recently it has been a, a, a really challenge to most of the, of the towns, we can talk about towns of uh, Bethlehem, Kwakwa, as well as Bloemfontein. How are you going to return, because you've mentioned that you are going to return and improve the, 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 the working conditions in those uh, testing centers? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, colleagues, uh, I think those were the set of uh, questions which were already prepared. Um, I'm advised that uh, I can give the DG to deal with some of those questions. And then uh, please, uh, if you are going to ask further questions or follow-ups, prepare them so that we can uh, take your, your names down. DG? Uh, preferably here, uh, DG. No, thank you very much, colleagues from the media. Um, let me deal with some of this question. Premier will just come and uh, um, emphasize further on those matters. The, and the speaker. Martin, you ask issues of the the district coordinators, their responsibility is to work with other partners in a, a fight for or against a, a gender-based violence and femicide. So they coordinate uh, all structures involved in the fight against the GBVF. The the critical part is that uh, we are going to establish later on a structure like uh, uh, AIDS Council, but this one will be a GVVF uh, cancer. It will be looking at what is it that we will do uh, to also look whether the perpetrators would have organized themselves, those that would have uh, repented and would have been released if they were arrested and so on. So if you know the Department of Sports had an issue around Buan, Buan Doda, the Premier uh, in 2019 had a big uh, conversation with men, uh, uh, men Lekhotla in Kwako. So the intention is to also bring them in within the space so that the GVV uh, campaigns are not only meant for 
uh, women and, and, and uh, um, our leaders, but also ordinary men are able to get into that space. The, the issue of the hard, lock, hard lockdown on projects, this has had an effect. We, that's why I think the Premier has called on uh, all of us to cooperate because if we were to be faced with uh, a stronger uh, third wave, the second wave has gone down. That's why the country is now at level one. We have, we have gone through second wave. The third wave, because it might also have winter in it, might even be more stronger. Uh, uh, so what is important is that if we go to uh, hard lockdown, obviously you would understand that industries stop. Countries lock also their um, uh, borders from where we get material in some instances, which is not manufactured in the country. So that has got a, a, an impact. We are going to have to juggle uh, the three, four balls at the same time and none of them must fall within this uh, COVID-19 uh, process because, as I say, if we all behave, the third wave might not be there, our projects will run, the country might remain at level one or level two, uh, and then we'll still be able to go on with uh, projects. So that, that is basically beyond government. But we now understand, and uh, we expect contractors also to get materials, uh, more materials in time, that they can be able to store so that even if other countries uh, or close their borders, they can still be able to uh, proceed. The, the one on scale down on uh, costs, I think that that's a legislature issue. Uh, we ourselves from the, the executive were basically uh, this time around, not involved with uh, other, other matters. The Premier, the service delivery protest, I think is an issue that you might want to talk to. I don't uh, see, you say it might have been sporadic targeted at uh, women mayors. I, I have not been able to look at that phenomenon. We address every service delivery uh, protest. As a protest, looking at what are the issues that people are protesting about and trying to respond in terms of uh, how they are able to, 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 to deal with that. The, the Ramkral matter is also a matter that bo affects both of us, the legislature and uh, uh, the executive. The, there are discussions going on in terms of uh, this process. Speaker, you, you may want to address it or do you want me to address it? <laughs> you, you'll deal that. Uh, you, you, you would know that uh, uh, government is doing a reassessment in terms of the Ram Kral. There has been also an investigation by the Auditor General Forensic, but our intention is to look at a different mechanism, a triple P mechanism in terms of addressing uh, the building of uh, uh, the legislature. So when some of those other impediments are dealt with, we will be able to conceptualize properly how we are going to deal with uh, uh, Ram Gra. That was Free State's uh, son. A number of projects that the Premier has spoken about, we have highlighted also the number of jobs that they are likely to create. Some of those projects are multi-year projects. And I think you have also to understand that they will start. Some of them are uh, basically multi-year. Then the issue of uh, the increase of uh, informal settlement. We have people settling. We have discouraged informal settlements. And the Premier, in addressing this matter in the speech, has said when there, is, uh, there are services uh, or sites have been serviced, 
the mayors must actually be able to put people in those new sites so that people don't settle informally and increase our uh, informal settlement. Because now we are chasing settlers instead of uh, being proactive in terms of planning and so on. So that part we will be able to deal with. Our licensing centers have been affected the most because it has got a lot of feet. And uh, most of the time, they were closed through COVID-19. Uh, stop and start in terms of the licensing centers. And also sometimes having to close earlier to enable fumigation because it's a lot of feed that is going there. We are at level one now. Even at level two, there was a little bit of improvement, but almost all services now are open in our traffic and licensing centers for, uh, uh, for COVID, uh, I mean, for, for applications beyond uh, lockdown uh, level one. It's, it's easier for us to work. As I said, it's more of a very interactive uh, service. Thank you, thank you, Program Director. I'm sure, uh, DG, you have covered almost all the questions. There's only one question that I've yet, uh, that is still outstanding, Hore. I've just talked about so many projects. If uh, those projects decide highly, especially those ones that are supposed to be implemented by the government, what is it that I'm going to do? It is unfortunately because I'm sure all of you have heard where I was now and then saying, MEC, can you make sure that uh, this project debate? So this year, we have discussed with MECs and issued this, so things are not going to be the same. It can't be COVID. It's either those who are supposed to do their work, they must do their work. If they are really not prepared to do their work, so this year, things are going to be a little bit tougher than before. Things are going to really change. It's either you do what you are supposed to do. If not, you will go. So I am sure things are going to happen. Because we have set ourselves a time frame. We have our own time frame. We have our own program. And Enrique said it's a time frame or a If you in most of the the project not later than June or not later than this month. So things are going to happen. If not, it's unfortunate we'll have to go. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, DG, I think you, you responded uh, appropriately on the, on the issue of, of, of Ramkral, so I won't uh, go there. But um, on the, the expenditure for, for this year's SOPA, uh, by Sunday, when I met with the team to receive a briefing, the indication was that we were at 35% of the total budget that we would have used. So I think by the end of today, the team is going to meet with, with me and give me the final figures of how far we have gone uh, 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 in terms of the expenditure on the, on, the, on the activity of today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, DG. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Speaker. 
Um, I think uh, the answers uh, are adequate unless if there are follow-ups or further questions from colleagues who have not been able to ask questions. Can I note if there are any further questions? If not, um, we can actually close because uh, the live broadcast that we are having um, was extended for 30 minutes. So any further question, colleagues? None. I think, uh, Premier, you have covered uh, everything. Thanks, uh, Premier, DG, Speaker. Um, uh, speaker, your guests are uh, waiting for you. Thank you very much.